half half or three fourths or one fourth, but whole. So in chapter 40, I don't want to be going there for lack of time, but we know that in verse 18, he says that he and his father, the father will come and make their home with everyone who has come to love him and keep his word. We, the body, receive life from him and we will share in the indwelling, intimate relationship that Jesus already has and enjoys with his Father. In that day, you will know, he says, that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. The image of the vine and the branches points to this deep, indwelling, dynamic, permanent relationship the kind that gives us in Jesus Christ. The image also points to the idea that the church is completely dependent on Jesus for its life and sustenance, just like the children. Our children is totally dependent on the parents, isn't it? I go some milk, some gata, some diaper, they will tell what they need so the mother or the father will or totally dependent so this is like us we might be tempted somehow to, to be our own minds and work inside by side with Jesus or we might want to think that it is okay to begin in a place of receiving food from Christ. But later, when I'm okay, okay God, just come on now. Anyway, okay Bob, I'll just call you when I need you. But is that the relationship the wine and the branches with? So, later of course we need, we need to head out of our own sometimes and things, but, but to remain in this place of dependence or being receiver of God's grace can offend our pride and seems undesirable. Diba parang, parang ako rin po, I was telling you sometimes my analogy na parang pag meron na akong preconceived idea, I don't want to hear your ideas. I don't want to, and even my husband and I, alam po, alam naman asawa ko lang siya ibigyan na as an, as an example, and sometimes my husband will correct me and I will say, Alam ko na yan, natin ko na yan. Kaya hindi ko siya pakapigyan. Kasi alam ko na yun, di ba? So kahit ang sabihin niya, meron na akong word. Pero pag ako naman, kung pare ko siya, ay makinig ka. Kasi nagsasalita ko. Di ba parang, I need myself. I am the, you know. So kami niyo ano, but but I am more, I would just like to give the relationship of the Father and the Son and that's, we can really learn to be healthy, to be, to have a healthy church. Because the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, they're in they're mutual indwelling. That's, that's who they are. And that's what they're sharing. They're sharing their relationship with us. That's why he said we are included, accepted, and loved. And I can no longer say na, oh, si ganyan, wala ka yung kapatid ko. Kahit po nung sa uh, the church that I'm serving, even the homeless, I call them brother, sister. We love each other and I'm so thankful that I have experienced that love from God, from Jesus Christ. Body-body niya yung mga ayo, yung mga nire-reject ng mga tao. But to me, it's an honor and privilege to be with them and call them my brother. Because Christ died for them as Christ died for each one of us. So to this branches is to confess our inability to give ourselves life, our deep and constant need of grace and redemption. And even in this book, Torrance says, I know you're familiar with Torrance, humanity resents that our reliance on God, men and women, young and old, all of us want to at least to cooperate with God in saving their lives. But this is a better way to lose their lives, to lose our lives, for that or by that very 
process, sin is not really acknowledged. And it's judgment and condemnation in the flesh are not really accepted. So actually the main thing, the main thing that we could ever commit is not to trust God. To think that I can do it myself. I know you. I know you can. But the relationship that Jesus has established with us is not static. It is not automatic. We do not exist in the divine possibly, but actively participate in this intimate relationship. It is just shared in his own ongoing, dynamic, loving relationship that he lives with the Father and the Spirit. Amazing. I mean, if we have trials, if we, sometimes, I don't have a problem with this. And even Paul, when writing all those you know, letters, some of the we know that he wrote it in the midst of trials. He was even in prison when he wrote four books the Philippians, the Philemon, the Ephesians, and Colossians. They were in the midst of trials. Any challenge, just put it up. And they have that joy. Because they know who God is. And when you know who God is, you will know who you are. Because fully God, fully man, we are. Totally human because of who Jesus is. His nature is the visible, visible image of the invisible God. We are so blessed. We just don't know why, why those blessings because we sometimes have so many things that block some way to know who He is, the blessing He has in store for each one of you. If I may qualify, I don't, I don't think I wrote it in, in PowerPoint. Okay, maybe you can post a PowerPoint because we said the Holy Spirit is changing. The Father, He says, He has qualified us to an inheritance that is imperishable, that is unfailing, that is imperishable, unfailing, and defiled. Sino po si Tito ang may kaya na diamond? Hindi man to diamond sa ito, no? Pero even this diamond will, will rust, it will fail. But the inheritance he had for each one of you is forever. It's eternal. Nobody can take it away from you. All you got to do is receive it. And receive it with thanksgiving. And acknowledge. <laughs> I would like also to give another quote, of course, just to make my my point. Thanks to Tito Tech, where is my box? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna read it. In verse 11, chapter 11 of Matthew, Matthew 20, 11, Matthew 20, Matthew 11, verse 25, 30. It says there, Oh yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things has been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father is the Son. And anyone who the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are weary and hurt, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the Queen Word do not stop saying you. What word was that? All things, all things, he says. The Jesus says, who have been handed over to me by my Father. If Jesus Christ, being fully God, fully, fully man, fully God, he totally, completely, wholeheartedly dependent on the Father.
Father, how much more are we? How much more are we growing on this God who loves us so much? Who loves us so much that He sent His Son to die for us? May this word be more, be the foundation that we will never ever forget. <laughs>
transformed by God's Spirit who is actively loving, speaking, and working in us. But what does remaining this abiding look like in our day-to-day -day basis? How do we actively abide in Christ in Jesus? Live as conscious as a true wine. And of course, I hope I have more time, but this says I give me, yeah, as I said, let me you know. So we have three aspects of abiding. Knowing, trusting, and obeying. Knowing to abide in Jesus is to continually be seeking to personally know him. Knowing is not the same as knowing about Jesus. And I would just say it involves giving and receiving, spending time, initiating, responding in different situations, doing things together, interaction. And my example last time is that my husband and I, okay, let's, we're so in love. Maybe pasa na tayo. Okay, so we decided to get married. And then when we get married, okay, okay. Love you, my sweet pie. Ito ang aking listahan. This is my list. Who I am? I am blah, blah, blah. I am blah, blah, blah. And then give me your list, who you are. And then let's just exchange. Is that how it works? Is that relationship? Is that knowing? Okay, I'm just giving you my list. This is who I am. Of course not. To know, yeah, it's, it really involves spending time together. Okay, parang after ng, ng mga ligaw at blues, di ba? Pagkatapos ng mag-date, pagkatapos ng mag-date sa bakit, gusto pa magtawagan, kung pinalangay, mura nga ang telepon. Eh, dati nung parang ba? Kaya nga ang panggagay ng mga. Nung parang muna ang araw nung pa, 32 years na kami kasa, so wala pa mga cellphone, cellphone. So we have to go home, but at least ay, telepon na so it's just like that. You're, you're in giving more of your time to God. And how do we do that? Of course, studying the Bible, the Spirit of Jesus, the Bible study. Knowing Jesus as we know Him with one another involves coming to see and perceive who He is and what He is up to. Seeking to hear clearly what He is saying, what He is speaking to us through the Spirit. And this really takes some effort because we sometimes don't really hear or see another clearly because we think we already know. Oh, I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to read the Bible. So, I'm going to read the Bible. No. It's spending time with God. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to read the Bible. Binala mo na ang pag-uusap. Magkatang ka na lang. Babalita ka na lang kita. Tutak na lang sa kwarto mo. Punta ako sa kwarto ko. Can you see the point? Coming to know someone else involve kind of repentance as well. Seeking to set aside our preconceived notions so that we can listen more carefully to what is happening in sin. And alam naman po natin what repentance is all about. It's not just, okay, I repent because I lie, I cheat, I trust it, I love that. No. It's more than that. It's just part of it. But really, in, in, in repentance involves changing the mindset of who God is, of His nature, His purposes. So how do we come to know Jesus? So we come to know Him by learning about Him of his character, his purposes, seeing who he is in relationship again to his father and the spirit. To meet him and hear him and see him most of his poverty in his written word and in response to the word in prayer. We trust that God by his spirit is present when he is present when, he's, when we study his written word. And that is his work to enable us to hear him addresses us. To meet Jesus, the living word, in listening carefully through the Holy Spirit to the living word, we actually grow in knowing relationship about himself. So
So, parang lagi akong tabihan, di ba? So, how's the, how is, mm, ay, siya na lang, ang nakam, ang sama sa akin. At ang pundi mo ang gagawin eh. Pero, <laughs> di ba? So, sa mga maraming kaibigan, ano? Pa, thank you, Lord. At uh, hindi, siyempre, hindi naman talaga tuyo. Matatawa kayo sa ano. Pero this is, pinagkilapan ko ni Tito Ted. Thank you, Lord. Pwede uh, ang yoke ito. Yung, di ba? Hinalagay dito to. Oh, nakita ko sa hindi ko dito. <laughs> so, it's just like that. Di ba, sabi niya, my yoke is easy and my burden is that. So, para kakala natin, pag natin yoke, o oh, sige, handa natin tayo. Okay, left, right, right, left. Teka, nasa na right natin. <laughs> okay, right, left, right, left. So, ganyan yung yoke, di ba, ng mga oxen, ng mga sheep, di ba? But actually, Jesus is you, it's just like this. At the style of it, and my, so Jesus Christ is always looking to the Father. Looking with the Father, and He's always looking for you to the Father. So, what's that? Right? Siguro tama tayo pa rin, no? Right? Right? Yeah. Because the Father said so. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, gano'n yung relationship ng father and the son. Kaya nung si Jesus Christ was about to, you know, go on the final. He fully entrusted his life to the father. He said, my will is to do the will of my father. And even his, his prayer, not my will, but your will be done. Can we also say that for ourselves, Mr. To God? Lord, your will be done. Because I fully trust you, because I know you, and I trust you, that what you have for me is always the best for me. I don't know what's ahead, even mamaya after this one, I don't know what's going on, but I know God is with me. That's why I can have that peace. I can have that joy in the midst of challenges. Even in the church challenges, I know God is here, ever present, wholeheartedly present in us. That's why like we can no longer be afraid. And when we do, because we are humans, we always look up the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know what they see? Trusting, and when he says, to remain in Jesus is to live out of growing confidence in who he is and his faithful commitment to complete his good purposes in us and in the world. To be the branch is to have confidence in the vine, to trust that the vine truly and completely can nourish and sustain you and me. I don't need to be looking for other blinds or other sabi natin, oh, I, 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 if I have the money, if I have the well, I think I'm good. Looking for other branches to flow into my own mind would only lead me to that. Actively abiding in Jesus is actively trusting that He is good and for me, for me and all my way to the rock bottom. His grace is truly sufficient and His power is made perfect in my witnesses. We have different witnesses, but thank God. He is our strength. He is our strength. That's what Pastor Aaron said, we are different. Thank God, we are a robot. It is actively trusting that He made me know me and knows who I am becoming in Him. He is my true source of life. He loves me and my identity. He knows me very well and no one else is. I've been married for 32 years.
confused, but I don't think that my husband knows me fully. Only God. That's why we have God in our heart, in our soul, in our mind, in all our being. The truth is we are always living and acting on the basis of trust and distrust. When we are not living from a place of confidence in Jesus' real presence and work right here and now, it might be because we are trusting in something or someone else. We might be trusting in our own skills or expertise, in our programs and our plans. Oh, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. I think it was good. When we have programs, do we even pray about it? Do we even include God and Lord? Or we might be acting on the basis of fear or anxiety, or we might be acting for a place of conviction that Jesus is not here, paying attention, able to remain faithful to His work in us. Oh, nakalimutan na yata ako ng galing. But if we know that God who is generous to all without reproach, if we know that He every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, we may really trust in the God of who He is. Whatever happens to us, whatever, we may, I don't know, I don't want to go into details, but Whatever happens, God knows because He is our ever present God who is for you and for you. He loves you just to say. Ibang sarap po noon? Paano mo kayo ng God? Sino ba taong pagkamahal sa atin pagbabayaan tayo? I have been blessed by you. You, na nagtatagtaramdam ko po ang pagmamahal mo sa akin. How much more ang God? Papahamak ba tayo ang God? No. All we have to do is trust. And this is, of course, we said, partic we participate in the Spirit's work to grow us in the knowledge and trust. We turn again and again and again, emptying of ourselves, emptying of our hands, to receive fully from Him. Because if my hands are full, I cannot receive something, isn't it? If I give up my Mr. Puso ng limang million, and I don't want to give it up, I don't want to give it up. If my hands are full, I don't want to receive my 5 million. So sir, I'll take it from you. Kailangan i-ano ko yung check eh. Ako talaga i-cash ko. Hindi, check lang yun eh. Wala eh. To share, it says, Jesus shares His own trusting with His Father. So, with us, so that we can grow in joyous conviction of His good Lordship over all. His complete faithfulness will bring to completion His good purposes for each one of us. Wow! Sino po bang maguna ang hindi magbibigay na sa pagpapamahal sa anak? We will even give our life for our children. And that's who our Father is! He gave His Son for us. As we Emptying of ourselves so that we may receive. We act on our cross based on who Jesus really is. We find that He is indeed trustworthy and we understand Him in a deeper place in our soul. And this leads to the third aspect, and that is obeying. We take some time to grow in knowing Jesus, hearing His words to us. He speaks to us in scripture, study, of course. We find deeper, deeper knowledge and trusting 
And it, we, it deepens our confidence in His good and gracious Lordship over our lives. And if we are trusting Him, we will want to act of course on the basis of trust. To live as if He is Lord. Because He is. So here in verse uh, chapter 15, verses 9 to 11, Jesus speaks of obeying Him in connection with loving Him. Ito po yung gusto gusto ko na scripture. I don't want kung nais ako yung direct class. He said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Diba sa po, no? I hope even our whole soul, I think, we may understand the deep meaning of it. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you that my, my joy may be in you. And that your joy may be oh. in his brother, but by proclaiming that he is love. He loves his disciples with a very love. In the very way, he is love of the Father. Not only the disciples, but all of us. We have been drawn to the prime God's own loving, living communion. That's why I, I always want to have communion table. It's a reminder for all of us what Jesus did, what the Father has planned. Jesus did and is doing. It's already finished. All we have to do is so in that reality of who you are. That's your identity, that you are loved, that you are accepted, that you are included, that you will treat others as your own brothers and sisters in Christ. remain in this loving relationship. How? Jesus tells them they remain in His love. Actively living and receiving it. Ibang sarap, tatanggap ka lang. Kung baga sa kayo na na, may bigyan ako ni Sir Kuso, eh baka pati pa ako si Kusea. Diba? Because we always term the blessings in material things. But it's hard heart higher than the real things. The blessings that God has in store for each one of us is more than we could ever imagine. We could, our minds cannot even fully comprehend how vast, how deep, how great is His love for each one of us. My response is just, Oh Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. My response is adoration. My, my response is praise. They are the very shape of His love. When we obey His word because He is so wonderful, so good, why would we choose to live contrary to Him in the first place? Jesus says that he remains in communion with his Father by obeying his commandments. If this Son is obeying the Father, what do you think is our response? It's so clear. Jesus says that he remains in communion with his Father by obeying his commandments and he says, my food, that's what he says in John 4, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and accomplish his work. 
Jesus' obedience to his father is not an abstract or arbitrary, but living in line with his good purposes of his father in his, in his sustenance. For Jesus' joy is obeying the Father whom He knows, whom He loves, and whom He we trust. And that's really something. Kaya po yung Christian, it's not boring. Because sometimes we thought that, oh, boring. Hindi ko na magagawa yung mga gusto kong gawin. I can no longer do this with that. But how do we know? If we are Christian, good ka po naramdaman yung inner joy, inner peace, inner love. Thank you, Lord! I have a great re relationship. I always talk to him every time. And I walk up in the at night. And I walk doing the dishes. Everything I do, I always talk to him. Oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because I love talking to him. It's not a burden, it's just a, a command, okay, you pray, you study the Bible, blah, blah, blah. No, it's a part of relationship. And that's the part of the son, yes. So when we are doing that, the church will be swap. Do you think it will not be stronger together in Christ? Because that's the first, the rock bottom, the foundation to have a healthy church. Because the Holy Spirit is at work. He is at work to help us to see more and more clearly how much better Jesus is than all our own ways of giving of ourselves or in ourselves life and value. He is at work to enable us to more deeply live in the freedom of trusting Jesus. With all that we are and all that we have. But this process, of course, again, I said, repentance. It involves repentance. An active turning away from whatever in the way of obeying Jesus out of trust in Him and His work. So it's just like that when I'm, it's two direction. I'm moving away from my sin and I'm moving forward or near God. That's repentance. Jesus, he says, in this process, he's always at work. When we are struggling to obey, it's helpful to realize that on our deeper level of our struggle to trust God, the obedience that Jesus desires, the obedience that is joy and food for life, is a share of his own obedience, which always springs from, as what he said, knowing and completely trusting or having faith in his loving Father. Ang sarap, di ba? Hindi mo makakasama ka sa relationship ng Tatay, tsaka ng Jesus, tsaka ng Holy Spirit. Ay, ako, I don't, hindi ko papakalit. I look at my blessing for who I am and what I have. Hindi na, dati po medyo madali akong, ay nakakalimit naman siya, meron siyang ganito, meron niya. O na-affect ko ng identity ko. And last week, I was in the middle of a party, hindi ko tabi yung mga kasama ko, hindi yaman nila. I just thank God for them because they are my sisters. They come again. But I, I'm no longer affected. I still think I have who I am. Because I'm rich. You rich, you, you come for is everlasting. And that builds my hope. The hope that will strengthen my faith and my love for the brethren. Because I know that there is hope that whatever challenges I am facing right now will not last. But what He has in store for me, that will forever and ever and ever. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. So obedience comes out of trust in Christ, and obedience feeds our trust in Christ. Keeping God's words as challenging as this often helps us to see even more that He is the object of all our deepest longings, the source of all true joy. Thank God.
<laughs> Jesus tells us that we the branches and he is the vine because this is true. He commands us to abide. That's he says, Sabri Gaideo, imperative, indicative, but I mean I'm pouring on. There is always an imperative what we are supposed to do because the indicative is always he says who he is and we can come in him. Our abiding in him is our obedience, our keeping his word. How many read John 15 and we have sometimes tempted to think that obedience Jesus is calling for here is the disciples' their prayer. Again, we may think that the Christian life is knowing about Jesus and now doing things for Him. I hope not. That we are just doing things for Him instead of doing things with Him. We may be tempted to think that it is our effort to preach the gospel. I have an ideal small church group family, marriage, life, etc. Kasi parang, oh, gagawin ko, kasi gagawin ko, bakit gagawin ko? Kung ano yung point pinagagawa sa inyo ng God, so be it. Sabi nga ni Pastor Aaron, iba-iba po ang mga ating personality, iba-iba rin ang papagawa sa atin ng God. So, huwag po tayo mahigit na bakit gagawin. Meron si ganito, meron si ganoon. Just thank God! Because He, this is His church! But we see in passage that is that all we think, all we say, all we do are to come from and feel back into a deep, real, dynamic, and interactive relationship with the one in whom we now live. Our primary concentration, concentration is not bearing fruit by our own efforts. Jesus does not command that we that we bear fruit here. He commands is that they abide, that they may abide. And in fact, he says that as they abide, we will be with them. See, all we have to do is abide, we will be with them. Don't always uh, measure the success by numbers. They have to remain with Jesus in a deliberate, ongoing way, and he will bring about fruit. It is by trusting in, staying in living communion with Jesus, remaining in His Word, following His lead, and obeying out of that relationship in trust and love that truth will come. What a wonderful news that is. Jesus has made us His own. We are and are becoming His beloved. His holy children. And He has made us, and He has made it so we can respond. We can receive. We can actively and joyfully again and again and again enjoy and grow in freedom of being the children of God. And so, I know I'm over time ago. But thank God. I can go on and go on with a lot of scriptures. But that's the basic. That's the foundation. And so as we partake of the Lord's table, and then you be reminded that God gave His own life. That the Father gave it all because of His great love. And my prayer is that may God speak up that day of His second coming. For He with Himself will dine with us, eat together with us. As He said, it is finished. Enjoy. Enjoy the, the ride. Enjoy the child. Because that's who he is. May God be able to help us to see how deep, how wide, how fast, how great this is love for each one of us. Amen.
and so she partake of it. Maybe as we partake it, maybe say thank you Lord, thank you so much for this blessing that we have. Partake it again and again to be reminded because I tend to forget. Thank God. It's always and it's always you. Heavenly Father in heaven and most high God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you so much for who you are. We thank you so much for your great love. We thank you, Lord, that we can always, always go to your throne of praise. We thank you so much for that love that you gave your son to die for us that we may become children of God, that we have the same love that comes from you, the same love that you are enjoying. As a father has loved me, so I love you, remain in my love. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit, for always transforming our minds, always, as what in Genesis, Genesis says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your word that you are always leading us to have the mind of Christ. Lord, we are self-emptying of ourselves that we may once again receive from you. Our posture is always to receive. Thank you so much, Lord, handing everything to you that we may receive what you have in store for each one of us. And this communion represents your great love, that you are saying no to our no. You're always pursuing us and thank you for you, God, us. We love you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and thank you for loving us more, more than we could ever imagine, more than we could ever comprehend. Thank you so much. We can't thank you enough. Thank you again. In Jesus' name, ask you for this blessing. In your name we pray. Uh, for those who can still rise, stand up and rise and raise up the bread. And we all say together, after me, Christ's body broken for me, I remember. the cup, symbolizing the blood of Christ, Christ's blood shed for me, I remember. Amen. Heavenly Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you Lord once again for this blessing. Thank you Lord for reminding us again and again. Thank you for the great love. Thank you. You never leave us not a single moment. And I thank you so much for your most precious time in this life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. It is finished. I pray that your great kingdom come, your will be done on earth, citizen. We praise you. We adore you. Highest praise and honor. Live in your In your mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.